The beauty of actually creating a character and then storing them in the library means you can pull them into any scene, whether it's a brand new scene or an established one. What I want to do right now is show you some of the basics of how I would animate the wear foot. So I'll go to the library I built. I'm going to pull down the wear foot and just simply drag this over into the timeline. All right, and there's our character. And what I want to do at this point, before I even start animating, uh, I want to start adjusting a few things. I'll go ahead and get the tail here and I'll show the different parts and the bone here and just kind of get that to a nice curve. And the wherefore has actually been designed uh, as if he's already leaning on the bar. So we'll just kind of figure out what his starting pose is going to be. And I remember that all this is set up with bones. So I want to make sure I'm using the bones and not just simply selecting the transform and then trying to move things that way, because that, as you can see, gets very crazy. So I make sure I'm just using the bones. and just show the ones that I'm using here. All right. And now once I've got the starting pose that I want, I'll go ahead and turn on my animate and I'm going to insert a keyframe. Let's do F6. And one thing I'll do is set up some basic key poses that I want. Uh, maybe every few frames. So pull the leg back in here. And let's maybe move the other leg a little bit. Got to make sure I'm not moving that with the gun. And maybe we'll have him grabbing for the gun. And again, it's very tempting to come in here and start messing with the actual drawing, but I want to just manipulate the bones instead. And maybe I'll just change up the hand here. And usually what I would end up doing is uh, setting up these main poses and then do a couple of passes like the next pass I would come through and just start manipulating how his uh, head's going to move. All right, so let's say once I've got that done, I'll come in for the next pass and we'll bend the head back a little bit here. And maybe by this pose, it'll go a little more forward. And then by the next key, have it go back up a little bit and I'm even going to do a little bit of a stretch. So now when I scrub this, it's not bad. And we'll do one last thing here. We'll select the torso, make sure we can see the bones and let's bend him up a little bit. On this next pose, bend him forward maybe. And I still want to make sure his hand is going for his gun. 
Let's make sure that bone is showing. And then the next pose, I want to make sure we're not giving away any of the illusion here. Looks like part of the drawing is coming apart, so I'm going to move the arm right into the correct socket. Select the torso again. And let's bend that. Now, typically when I'm doing animation, uh, especially if the character's talking, I would have the dialogue that's going along with that. So I'll have his body moving along with what he's saying. But this is just showing you how I would go in and set up some of these poses here. Now, one thing I do want to do, uh, since the feet are moving, I think I would actually have the full body move, like he's sliding forward a little bit. So I'll turn on my onion skin. Let's zoom in here. And a little trick you can do is I'm going to temporarily turn off the interpolation between the frames here. So I'll simply do Command L and that's Control L on PC. And what I can see now is what's in frame one and only what's in our current frame, which is frame five here. So in frame five, I'm going to move the feet so it makes a little more sense. And again, I turned it off just so I can see that one drawing there. So now I'm going to make sure I turn that animation back on. So we'll do Command K, that's Control K on PC. All right. And we'll make sure that this leg makes a little more sense. And just drag that back down. All right, I'll turn off my onion skin and zoom out here. And this is a quick little rough of exactly how I would go about animating the character there. And maybe one last little thing, we'll move the tail up a little bit. Maybe even give a little bit of foreshortening. And then maybe by here, it's gone back to normal, stretched out and a little lower. So when it comes to animating the wear foot, uh, I basically go through and manipulate just some of the basics first and then come through each pass. And again, it makes more sense to actually animate to the audio. And that way you can have the character move based on what's being said, or uh, in his case, he even screams at one point. So you can animate without shooting blindly.